من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطاهرين الحمد لله we have um, summed up a lot of aspects of this important science very being very very brief very concise straight to the point just to give you a uh, good exposure a quick exposure to this important uh, ilm ilm usul al fiqh hopefully it'll open up many avenues for you and inshallah if god gives us the tawfiq and the success we will be able to um, start uh, more advanced uh, courses on this subject rational evidence or reason is a fundamental source in legislation in Islam. It's one of the four that we have um, continuously mentioned. After the Quran, the Sunnah, we have reason. Then we have consensus, which is ijma. Now, reason is an independent reason is an independent source, an independent uh, reference for legislation in the Sharia. Ah. We can use reason because in Islam the Sharia ah is based on masalih and mafasid. Masalih is plural for maslaha which means that which is of benefit and mafasid plural for mafsada which means that which is harmful and detrimental. And so if we look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed for us within the realm of sharia ah, in aspects of fiqh and jurisprudence in order for one to reach that highest level of perfection they need to adhere to that which is helpful and beneficial to them and avoid and stay away from that which is detrimental and harmful to them so the whole aspect of our religion is based on these two important um, parts maslaha and mafsada all of these are known by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so maybe we might not know what the true benefit of this is or what the true damage or harm of that is but we still follow it and observe it anyway this is that absolute unconditional devotion and reliance we have on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, it's not easy for a person to have that level of Islam or submission to the will of the Almighty. So, when we talk about these commands, we understand that the human being concurs this and accepts this and at times, the human being cannot comprehend certain aspects. Is it possible for our religion, in our Sharia, ah, for there to be conflicting commands? For two things to be directed at us at one time, each one of them are totally opposite to the other. Can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say it is wajib to do this and it is also haram to do this at the same time from the same aspect rationally it's impossible like god says pray and don't pray in the same state at the same scenario who tells us this our reason tells us this but are there cases where there can be a wajib and a haram but from a different angle of course they can if that is the case which one precedes the other would it mean that that obligatory act becomes nullified and is batil and rejected because of the committing of a forbidden act like for example you are praying and your eyes fall onto a non-mahram person and you look at them with a haram lustful gaze you are doing something wajib 
which is praying, but you are also doing committing something haram, which is a lustful gaze. Will your prayer be invalid? What is the situation here? Another example, performing wudu with usurped stolen water. Praying on usurped land. Will your prayer be valid but you've committed haram? Or will your prayer be valid and you've also committed haram? Will your wudu, will your ablution be valid but you've just committed haram? Or will your wudu be invalid along with you having committed a haram act? In Usul uh, al-Fiqh, this is called Ijtima' al-Amr wa nahi the combining of command and a prohibition. And this is a very important uh, topic in Ilm Usul al-Fiqh. So, obligation and prohibition being directed at one subject with one title or at different subjects with one title or at one subject but under different titles these are all different scenarios that have been uh, discussed which one of them is haram which one of them is halal what aspects do we need to look at is that prayer while looking at someone in the, with a lustful gaze? Is that prayer valid? Are you even able to do that? Can God command you to do wajib and haram at the same time? Command you to do wajib and um, prohibit you from, from doing haram at the same time? Is it possible? Or how about another issue in, uh, which is to do with reason? In order for you to be able to do something wajib, you need to prepare the preliminaries for that particular wajib. Hajj is obligatory at the time that one is capable. Is it wajib for you to prepare yourself for istita'a, for capability, in order for you to travel to hajj? Or can you reject and refuse istita'a? When once you become mustatiyah, does it mean that you need to prepare all of the other preliminaries for your hajj trip? Does it become wajib for you to go out and get your passport and go out and get your visa and book your ticket and whatnot? Is muqaddimatul wajib also wajib? Are the preliminary acts for uh, obligatory acts also wajib? How about prohibition and its necessitating invalidity, which we had or, or just spoken about now? How about wajib that is incumbent upon yourself and wajib that is a com incumbent upon others? Let me explain what this means. There are prerequisites that you might need to do that are directed at the act itself which is of course called wajib nafsi like you having to pray there are wajib acts that are not related to the act itself which is for example tawaf but that are directed at you as well which is called al wajib al ghairi the Obligatory for another. Where do we get the basis of, of this? Through our reason. Our aql, our intellect tells us that you need to get the prerequisites for the obligatory. And it is obligatory for you to establish those things. Of course there's a big discussion in usul al-fiqh as to whether the prerequisite for the obligatory is in fact obligatory as well. There are discussions 
as to whether there, it is possible for uh, there to be a prohibited and an obligatory combined together or ijtima' al-amr wa nahi and if it was the case would it necessitate invalidity or not whatever the case may be the intellect perceive the intellect perceives and understands and acknowledges that it has a role in usul al-fiqh and it is used in many of the procedures of deduction of uh, fatwas in usul al-fiqh and this is why it is one of the fundamental sources in our legislation inshallah we will um, carry on uh, next uh, lesson with the uh, divisions of usul al-fiqh walhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina muhammad wa alihi tahirin yeah.